Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here, bringing guys another video here today. We're bringing guys a 3D banner design tutorial. Uh, I'm pretty much going to be using, of course, Cinema 4D and Photoshop as always, guys. And as you can see, this is what I got going on. So, my kind of feel was I see people like do these really cool kind of, you know, just like extremely dark kind of backgrounds or just like light or not really light, just different beautiful colors kind of mixing and just making that the light itself. No crazy focus light, just something really fun and cool like this and I thought I'd give a crack at it. Why the heck not? So I was like, yo, I came up with this. Yo, honestly, by the way guys, thank you guys so freaking much. I asked for 300 likes in my last video and you guys gave me 500. It felt really, really, really good. I, I appreciate you guys so very much. I, I love the fact that you guys enjoyed the actual text effect. So honestly, I want to say thank you guys so much for that really quickly and then just, you know, overall, yeah. So, because that was freaking awesome. I really didn't expect that whatsoever. And, yo, okay, I guess I got to keep with the text effects. All right. So, anyway, today, however, that's my chair, um, I'm doing a banner design tutorial. So, here we go. We kind of have the, it's very simple, almost, right? It doesn't have anything crazy, but it looks really cool. And it's just a regular, I would say regular 3D kind of render. Nothing crazy hard, complicated, anything like that. I'm just going to quickly flip through these uh, different colors with hue and saturation. I would not recommend this if you were to change your colors, but just for like video purposes, look, yo, that right there looks pretty sexy. I'm not going to lie. That's a different color, right? Uh, what else would look pretty good? Like there's just some different color schemes that you might just want to see. Like purple and freaking green look good together. Uh, so does pink and green. That looks freaking awesome as well. So it's just like really cool. It just looks really good. That looks baller as hell too. Yo, this looks dumb pretty. Like I'm down for this. All right. So, of course, the first thing we're going to start off with is going to be Cinema 4D right over here. And here's the, the actual complete render from the last, uh, the, the, the whatchamacallit that I just showed you guys, the uh, example. So, if you guys want this, all that cool stuff, so, of course, two likes on the video. equals a secret down below. And as always, guys, you know what might be the PSD of the video and Cinema 4D file this time. Who knows? It's a secret, right? It's, it's a secret still, right? I think so. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing going. And, uh, yeah, let's do this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. So the first thing I'm, of course, going to do really quickly is just kind of hide this text right here. So if I go ahead and pre-render anything, nothing that I'm going to be doing in a, like in the, you know, of course, in the future of this tutorial, you won't be able to see this example here that we have, but I could go back and reference it if I want to, but just kind of like unhiding it and stuff. So I want to let you guys know, don't really worry about this. Let's just pretend this is not here. This is my Lightroom stuff. And uh, the first thing you're going to start off with is the MoGraph mode text. Now, of course, this is your text kind of layer kind of thing going on here or your layer tool your text tool there we go in cinema 4d so i'm gonna go ahead and just type in the word banner because that's the word i believe i use uh and i'm gonna go ahead and use the font long haul i've been using this font a lot i should probably find a different one um let's go ahead and just use this one and we're gonna change our alignment to the middle that way it's square in the middle and i can just like kind of rotate stuff like that in the middle and not have it be on the side because it's very awkward and weird sometimes so i'm gonna go ahead and change the depth here to about 90 percent or 90 i keep saying percent i think i'm in photoshop 90 depth so 90 centimeters and you can see it kind of just brings the depth up more however much you want to have it is however much you want to put it it doesn't really matter at any moment in time in this tutorial of course you can change the depth and kind of fix or kind of like you know mess around with whatever you guys want now the one thing I always liked about 3D is like, I would l kind of enjoy if it didn't have sort of a very straight kind of linear, you know, subject matter when you're looking at the text. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of like fix it up a little bit, rotate different letters. And the way I'm going to go ahead and do that is I know I just spelt it all in one layer, but if you press C on your keyboard or right click make editable. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the layer, press C on my keyboard. If I drop down these two groups here, you'll see the word banner, which basically is this word right here. So each letter is now its own individual mode text and that's what you kind of want so i can just basically take this group that has all of them here and then delete the rest of that stuff so basically i'm going to call this main text and from this i'm just going to click on each letter take my rotation tool and sort of just kind of rotate it in a way that i think would look good and you know don't really have don't really mess around too long on this it just make it different make it just spacious make it have some kind of uh i would suggest the word character sure right okay that'll, that'll work the word character um just so it can have a little bit different just a little bit difference between other people's 3d text or whatever so it's just not straight and who knows i don't know what i'm even saying anymore i just want to say to rotate your layers or your letters it'll look better it just looks fun and if i run this out really quickly i maybe move these three letters over actually first um and maybe even rotate like the entire thing a little bit that way I don't know if that tilted a lot of you guys, but I'm just going to go ahead and just see what that looks like. 
All right, cool. So it's pretty. It looks already looks more fun. It, it doesn't look inter like incredibly difficult. This is not a difficult render of any sort. And whatever, if you're new to Cinema 4D, this will be super straightforward for you guys. Um, so pretty much at this moment in time, I'm gonna go ahead and make a duplicate of each of my text layers. So I'm gonna just, uh, well, not each of them. This text layer, this text group here, where it's main text. It, it's basically you gotta press Control C and Control V. Uh, basically, of course, same thing of like in your main computer. We're gonna call this. Um, what do we want to call it? We're going to call it like wires because we're going to turn these letters here, our duplicated letters into wires essentially is what I would like to call them. Basically, if you look on my Photoshop here, these wires are coming out here. Maybe you didn't even see them, notice them or whatever. Um, however, just added a little something for me. It kind of just felt right. And I just want to show you guys how I did that really quickly. It was using these simple caps here. Um, if you guys want to also, if you want to click on each letter, you can do this before you actually did the whole text thing. If you want to change your start and end to fill a cap, fill a cap, and then change your radius on both of them to one right here, it'll make your edges a lot more rounder. It just looks really kind of neat in a way. Um, so what I'm going to do for these, however, is I'm going to change them to fill it and then just lower my radius to one again. Go to my ob object here and just lower my depth to about 10. So there's no real depth to it. And it just looks kind of like wires. So as you can see, it's very, very simple to do. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in change my angle a little bit use the movement tool rotate it maybe something like that I'll take this blue here or this one put them on the wires always change your projection to cubic and then click the word seamless for all your materials and I always do this one more time I can press control C V again and then just rotate this one a different opposite way or even change the color of the the uh, the material if you want to let's uh, bring this down Let's like zoom out a little bit. Let's say that's okay, right? Let's just quickly render this out so you guys can see. It's a very, it's a very basic kind of like wire kind of theme scheme going on here. So as you can see, it's very simple, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just close these groups together or close these groups down, and I'm gonna change my main text as orange. I'm gonna be using, of course, uh, seamless. If you guys want the actual materials, just let me know. I'll probably put them in the secret download as well. I mean, it's a secret, right? Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and say that that is perfectly fine. That's good enough. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to make basically the background, this back portion here. If you guys can kind of see, it's a very abstract kind of feel you got going on. However, it does say the word banner and I'm going to show you how I did it. Very, very simple stuff. Click on the word main text again, control C, control V. Of course, it's going to be a group or excuse me, a layer again of your same kind of uh, font or your text here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Actually, what I'm going to do is really quickly use this. Put this in the middle, please. Thank you very much. And then make it bigger. Cool. Now, just a tiny, not, not a tiny bit bigger, but just big enough so it's bigger than the other stuff behind it, right? I'm just going to make this blue, by the way, so that way you can tell the difference. And also, I, I want it to be blue. Um. So, all I'm going to do is drop that this group. And if you guys don't know about the distort tab right here, it's located over here. And anything you kind of put, if you use anything of these, put them right below the actual, like the, right on the last kind of spot in the group and you'll be able to see like a distortion happen. So for me, I'm gonna be using the word, uh, the, the word, the uh, distort spherify, spherify, sp mm? spherify. Yep, we're gonna say that. It's basically a sphere, right? And we're gonna just drop it right on the last kind of like part of the actual group. And as you can see, it's already applied. If you can kind of see the background here, that looks pretty cool. It'd be funny like a little motion design if you wanna mess around with that. Um, so all I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go to my, uh, my radius and my strength. I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit. So I'll say I put my strength up to about, I don't know, let's say like that. And we'll make our radius quite big, quite large. And if I want to, I can just move this around a little bit just so I can get it like right there. If I quickly render this out, you can kind of see, I'm just trying to make the word banner in the background look very abstract, very fun. However, it's going to look pretty cool because it's just kind of filling the space. It'll help us fill the, the, the space of the banner more. Of course, later on when we get into the Photoshop and it looks pretty cool. It looks very cool, very simple. Like I said, it's a very simple render. However, there's nothing simple about when we go into Photoshop and kind of like mess around with the, uh, the color correction and stuff like that. So um, also you can see my actual CC is a lot different colors than the actual uh, these colors I'm using here. So I think this works. Looks pretty cool. These wires are like really weird or whatever, but it works. Um, if you guys want to, you can make another duplicate and we're going to make this duplicate duplication. We'll make it white or we'll just basically t take off the, uh, that there. And we're going to go back into fill it or for the caps for here. We're just going to put it on. Let's just put it on. 
we'll just keep it on fill a cap right and we're just gonna go ahead and go to our depth here which is our kind of like our movement it's over, under movement this time and we're gonna put it like 20 percent or so 20 centimeters come back here i'll show you at a different angle taking this blue right here this blue uh arrow and then dragging this back a little bit i'm gonna drag it down just a tiny bit and then just give it a small rotation and that way it kind of gives a little bit of contrast if you guys know what i mean i mean just mean kind of have like a white or even just change it to a different color like basically a white or a black kind of toned um kind of material if you guys want to i just deleted the material completely off of it so it's kind of like a very grayish kind of tone and it kind of gives contrast between of course this orange and blue and without it and you can see here mine's like a little bit bigger as well i made my a little bit bigger and see it's just a nice little contrast and looks really good as well so if i want to i should just probably make it just a tiny bit bigger right and then move it over there we go so i got a little bit of contrast and then basically last but not least is this really weird part going on in the background here that's also done in uh, Cine 4d so i'm gonna go ahead and do is i'm gonna duplicate my main text here once again and i'm gonna leave it orange because i'm gonna have the background where i want it to be orange and then pretty much i'm gonna make this we're gonna bring this back really really far back than everything else make this a tiny bit bigger for now and we're gonna go ahead and use the actual distortion uh what is it called wrap right and so i have a specific settings for this but of course i'm gonna have to mess around with just a little bit because it's not the same exact render so the setting for this is 130 for the width height 470 950 for the radius 200 for the longitude start and then the end will be 360 and then movement 11 and then everything else 100 so if I can see in the background here, if I want to, I can make this even bigger. Let's just quickly move this again to the middle so it's not awkward when I make it bigger, right? I'll move this down a bit. Make it a little smaller, actually. And this kind of like this abstract stuff in the background here will sort of just kind of make our when we do our duplication and kind of use our blurs and stuff like that to actually get these abstract looking things on the edges to look a little cooler. It'll really work. It'll look really awesome. I'm going to go ahead and just mess around with my movement here, make this a little bit up here. And if I quickly render this thing out, we're pretty much done with the actual render itself. Now, this render is, there's, like I said, no real direction with this render. It's very fun, very just kind of like weird in a way, basic in a way also. And pretty much when we go to Photoshop, we're just going to make it look really freaking cool. So whatever kind of render idea you kind of have, execute it with the way you want to execute it. Use a very kind of almost dull like uh, kind of materials that I'm using here. And put it into Photoshop. You can use the same exact uh, skill set or the uh, how do you call it? The color correction, the setup, same exact way inside Photoshop. You most likely will get a really good look as well. Just kind of depends. I just wanted to get a render out for that, and this is kind of what I came up with. Nothing crazy hard, nothing crazy difficult. Looks cool, whatever, and it's abstract, so it's kind of like in my boat. So of course, pretty much now I'm gonna go ahead and just click over here. We're gonna call this render. 3d why not right under my desktop make sure your format is on png put on our alpha channel that way the background is basically uh how do you call it transparent aiming inclusion global animation and sharpen filter uh you can copy these settings down if you guys wish to for them and you just go to here and then find them if you don't have them in your actual lightroom already right and then you're pretty much good to go so i'm gonna quickly run this out and we're gonna go into photoshop and end the tutorial in over there so yeah Okay, guys, so 37 seconds later, as you guys see, the render didn't take long whatsoever. I did, however, change the strength of the little uh, kind of distortion I had in the background for the banner word. As you can see, this is my original one that you guys saw for the example, correct, from the beginning of the video. And this is the one that I kind of did just now. So as you can see, it has a very big difference. So I did lower the tone for this. I didn't move it anything whatsoever. I just lowered the settings for the actual distortions. And as you can see, I came up with this right you can see that the word banner and stuff did not move whatsoever i just changed around with the settings a little bit just to make it a little a little more or less kind of like in your face so basically it's done i can go into photoshop now and i can go ahead and throw on our actual uh stuff here put this in here we're gonna call this render and we're gonna make this 10 times bigger or at least a little bigger alt shift take the corner make it bigger just like so go ahead and put it in the middle and I would say 
we're ready to go. So right away, I need to show you guys the obviously the background color. It's not black actually. Um, it's kind of like a bluish tonish black. It's a black blue, if that makes any sense, right? The hex code is 000104. Press OK. Go ahead and just put that on your background, and you're good to go. It's sort of not the reason why I didn't put it black. It just it kind of um you can use kind of any kind of color. All right, I keep saying the word kind of because I'm trying to think of a way to explain it. If you guys choose to, you can kind of like maybe move around the hue itself, but keep it down here, right? Whatever colors can be using, whatever kind of comments the most, that's what you want to do because your color correction and stuff will matter, all that crazy stuff. So I will let you guys know what the background color is. It's kind of important. So uh, the way to start this off is I'm going to make a duplicate for the render here. And we're just going to call this one for now. And on this duplicate, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'll say like around this size is pretty good. Correct, right? I'm going to put it on a simple little angle tilt, just like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and use filter, blur, motion blur. And I'm going to go ahead and blur this out maybe like, maybe, I think 233, 230, whatever, around that. It looks pretty good, as you can see, right? So it's just very, this is, for me, this is going to be filling space and also putting color in the background without using like too much crazy like little splats of light or whatever. However, this works for me. If you guys choose to, you can do this once again. Press Control J to make uh, basically a copy of the first copy that you guys made. I'll name this number two. I'm gonna make this a tiny bit bigger. Not a tiny bit, I'm gonna make it quite a lot bigger actually. Right, and I'm just gonna use Control F once again. If you guys don't know what Control F does on your keyboard, it uses the same exact uh, whatever you did, setting, distortion, once again. So a Control F, you're gonna see I'm gonna be using motion blur over again. It's basically like clicking on motion blur, pressing OK, all over again, but all I'm gonna do is press Control F so it does it on my own. And now what I can do, press OK, right? I'm just gonna move this down over here. Actually, before I actually end up doing that, I'm gonna show you guys something. So I'm gonna change my render to uh, screen here. I'm gonna change my one, this is the duplication for the background, right? Also to screen. I'm gonna go ahead and change, I'm gonna use the uh, little mask thing down here. So if you guys know about the masking kind of thing under your layer buttons, it's sort of like a way to erase that's not gonna completely erase it forever and you can never go back. Basically, if you click on this little white box here, if you're using your brush, your black brush goes in and erases the stuff, right? And then if you change your brush to white, which is gonna do it automatically, by the way, you can just fill it in once again. So it's sort of like an eraser, an infinite eraser that you can continuously keep fixing over and over again. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to erase where the word banner is showing on the background right here. So you can see it erases just like so. And then now I'm going to go ahead and I'll say erase a little bit more. That was my phone. That wasn't yours. I'm going to go ahead and just let's I'm freaking mute this. I never ever do that. Jesus Christ. All right, let's put that on mute. Um. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just control J, right? Make a duplicate of this. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, right? Just like so control T alt shift, take a corner make it bigger just like so and then what i can go ahead and do press that control f press ok again and i'll just sort of move this right here i'll go back to here and sort of erase what's going on right there and this is sort of just to put color correct so let's just go ahead and take this duplicate this and move it up here as well right you can kind of see what the what the whole, whole purpose of this is so i was just duplicate this a couple more times and just sort of got more color in the background so right before i do that i'm gonna go ahead and make another new layer uh, it's just right below everything. I'm gonna use this blue tone that I have here. I'm gonna use a pretty big brush. I'm gonna click in the background a couple times to fill a little bit more space, just to kind of add more kind of aurora kind of light going on. Put it on screen, and what I can do is I can just press Control U. This will bring up the hue and saturation for the actual brush that I just did, and just lower the lightness, right? And then just get it so it kind of just shows the color just the tiniest bit that the background still sort of looks like darkish black and then if you kind of nail this part right here i promise the rest is going to be completely easy and just kind of really focus on this part here whatever your render is kind of get more light going around with using the render and motion blur um i promise you this is the hardest part about the tutorial the next part is going to be me reading off freaking paper of what the color correction is right now so let's go ahead and do that actually before i do that i'm going to go ahead and use a brush here use an orange from the actual uh, the 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 actual render here, change this to screen, and then lower my opacity down. And now I'm gonna go ahead. I'll say 50%. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually start doing the color correction. So brightness and contrast here starts off with a 40/40, correct? 
right? It kind of just brings out the color a lot more automatically, really quickly. As you can see, it's a very kind of a big deal when you start doing this. Uh, vibrance, right? I'm gonna put this to 75 and then 55. This, of course, is gonna make my just it's gonna make my panel a lot more vibrant. And as you can see, the color is gonna very it's gonna pop a lot. And now, if you probably already noticed, I did use color balance. If you haven't been noticing my tutorials for my 3Ds or whatever, my Photoshop stuff, I've been using color balance a lot to change my colors around. I really highly suggest you guys to do the same. It's very freaking awesome, actually. So 27 is what I have, negative 12, and then 8. So if you guys want to see really quickly, if you kind of just flirt around with this, you can see colors and tones change. And you you might just find something that you really like a lot more than what you had prior. Um, I love the color that I had in the beginning. However, when I started moving around and just doing stuff like, you know, this color change, it looks cool to me. It looks different. I love it. And I really suggest you guys to go ahead and figure it out and sort of kind of, you know, really work with your color balance. And I promise you guys, you might end up with something that you like 10 times better than what you started with. And you end up liking the actual project more. So yet again, add another brightness and contrast. We're going to be adding a lot of brightness and contrast. So as you can see, this brightness and contrast kind of makes everything dark again. However, the color, the light, sort of the the uh, the luminancy from the actual text is still coming through. If you guys want to, you can lower this opacity around 80% if you guys wish to. And then we're gonna add yet again another brightness and contrast. This is the only way that I knew that I can do this. However, it still works. It still looks clean. It doesn't mess around and distort the blacks too much. So negative 15 and negative 65 for the ne uh, the next brightness and contrast, right? And then last but not least, one more brightness and contrast. And this is gonna be 91, 100, right? And I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I erase the actual text here so it's not, oops. Let's use the brush, the black brush here. Make sure I erase this text here so it's not completely, you know, crazy. And then maybe erase around in different spots just like so. Lower my opacity down. This That last one was just kind of for like, you know, like a me thing. I wanna mess around with it, float around with it just a little bit. Um, we're going to lower this opacity down the second one that we did a little bit, 675 or so, right? Okay, it still looks pretty freaking awesome. So what I'm going to do now is going to add, I'm going to just kind of group this all together. Just, uh, if I want to, I can add one other thing. I can add levels. I did add levels for my other one, but this is kind of like, you kind of want to figure out what you can find and sort of how you can balance. So if you have a lot of distortion, like this right here, this is color distortion. It doesn't look good whatsoever. If you have that kind of stuff going on for whatever color scheme you have, find your levels and sort of just kind of play around with it a little, little bit. You'll find that you'll you'll kind of get rid of some stuff. And this right here looks really good to me. And it kind of makes my colors vibrant a little more as well. The distortion is still kind of crazy up here. So I'll maybe like still try to fix it a little bit more. Like, you know, you're not going to fix it completely, but you'll make it better. So if you kind of flirt with it, it'll look good. And once you're done with everything, you can group the CC together with control G, just like so, and rename the group CC. And then pretty much you're almost done. I'm going to add one other thing. I'm going to add another orange going across, just like so with screen to add a more light. If I want to add it, maybe a lot of, a little bigger, right? Kind of going in the middle here. And then maybe I'll lower the opacity down. Maybe I'll even move it a little bit and kind of erase this because this line is going to, of course, appear. Erase this and kind of just flirt with it, right? And then what I can do as well, I can maybe add even a little bit on the on the sides, you know? Kind of a little bit of orange. Put it on screen again. Lower the opacity down. And if I want to, I can I'll maybe add this one below the actual color correction. And then just make it a little more vibrant, right? And as you can see, you find yourself in a very very freaking awesome spot so th we're not done however the color looks good the background looks very dark and it looks really dope it's popping out the last part i want to do is the simple little things that i actually did i'm gonna group everything together in this group here so we can see the example or the tutorial example and then the actual example that i have so if you see here the one thing that's missing by the way i did change my color my hues my excuse me what is it called the color balance a little bit so my my other thing kind of has a different cc to it um, if I wanted to, though, I'll try to find it really quickly. Kind of what I had before. That looks pretty dope. But I liked what I have. I'm going to keep with it. I'm going to roll with it. But that's what I mean by using color balance, by the way, to change your colors. Anyway, as you can see here, this kind of stuff going on here is actually done with filter gallery. So what I ended up doing was I actually, besides grouping everything together, you can do, you can group everything together if you guys want to. Or you just, or you're going to need to either way. I don't know why I'm making this really difficult for you guys. Basically take everything, including your background, shift click on it. Let's just open this. You guys can see I'm selecting everything, control J to duplicate it and then control E. 
And then the purpose for this is I almost saw my Photoshop crash again. I got a heart attack. Um, basically after this, you're going to see yourself with a, a layer with of course everything in it. Oh, that was my, my printer, uh, with everything in it. So you're going to have your layer with everything in it. And this is what you want. You want to go to filter. You want to go to filter gallery. And the one that I use is under the, uh, under the folder sketch, go to Chrome, change your detail to nine and your smoothness to zero. Press okay. And you'll find yourself with this. And I believe it's on color dodge that I changed the actual layer mode to color dodge. I lowered my opacity to about 65 or so. Uh, even more maybe I don't know like 45 either way I'm gonna add this little uh, masking tool again here press B on my keyboard um, and then you're gonna pretty much find yourself of course using B on your keyboard brings up the brush I'll use black to then erase this I will race around where I don't kind of want the crazy kind of chrome chromatic kind of thing going so I'm gonna race that up here I'll erase this down here right and then I'll go into here a bit I definitely don't want it popping up crazy on my text. However, I will keep a little bit. I'll maybe like kind of flirt with it a little bit. Maybe give my, my text a little bit of a, how would you call it? Like a highlights or stuff like that. Just like so, right? And then you can see, you kind of have this cool crystallizing stuff going on in the back of the abstract stuff that you did. Now, if you guys want to, you can do it once again, control J, control E, everything in your actual composition. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Use 4% Gaussian Blur, a 4 pixel Gaussian Blur. Go ahead and use my mask thing again. Brush. Take my black brush so you erase around and kind of just give it, you know, a little more just kind of fun to it. Where you want to have your focus points at. And then I would suggest once you finish that, you're pretty much done. Oops, let's use a brush here and erase. And you're pretty much done right so it's it's sort of like a really fun concept whatever you can do in the background you can add like different pictures in the background mess around with your blend modes this sort of style is just kind of used kind of just i just wanted to do it so bad because it was just sort of it sort of looks really cool if you take your time with it more kind of like figure out what you want to do a little more like the filter gallery stuff was completely last minute this looks good itself um if i want to i could also probably even make my render a little bit bigger because this stuff is kind of small in the actual banner design uh if i want like make my render bigger like that is what i mean to fill the space a little bit more better. Um, however, I do love how this thing came out. I love the fact that this whole chromatic thing is gonna change by the way, cause I just made everything bitter, bigger. But yeah, it looks freaking awesome. It's freaking dope. And I really suggest you guys to try it out yourselves. I hope you guys did end up enjoying. I just wanted to really throw out a 3D tutorial for you guys. Um, I hope this was cool enough for you guys and all that cool stuff. It was a very simple basic render, turned into something really freaking awesome. So once again, thank you guys so freaking much by the way, for the for like the 500 likes basically on my other video and let's just see can we just can we just hit the 200 likes on the first day and on this video right here i would much very much appreciate it thank you guys so much so of course don't forget to follow me on twitter at sysohq also don't forget to check out my selfie -fi, selfie.com slash sysohq for any premium packs of those three bucks do not forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already don't forget to leave comments down below whatever tutorial you want to see me do maybe i'll do it you never freaking know and as always guys i love you guys thank you guys so freaking much for the support and i'll talk to you guys later so so hq out peace don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later